identity. Surviving is to continue to live or exist, especially in spite of danger or hardship. What is it that matters in survival? There are many different threats that a person can face. Threats to your physical body, your romantic partner and children's lives, your reputation, your emotional bonds and connections with others, your physical and intellectual possessions, your emotional and spiritual health, your memory and finances. When we think of ourselves, we think of the part of us that can identify who and what we are. There is a difference between the identifier and the identity, even though they are the same thing. Suppose I wonder whether I will survive the coming war. Brainwashing, brain transplant, heart transplant, teleportation, social revolution, reincarnation or resurrection, financial recession, pandemic, cyber attack or romantic breakup. What do I really care about? What matters in survival is mental, physical, spiritual, financial, genetic, intellectual, cultural, emotional and reputational continuity and connectedness. That after an event, all of these factors will flow on. That my present experiences, thoughts, beliefs, desires and traits of character should not only continue to exist in the future, but should also reproduce and multiply. In other words, what matters in survival is identity. Identity between the I who exists now and the surviving I who will exist then. Another thing that matters is my ability to identify, to be able to discern parts of my identity that did not make it through the battle and update to the surviving I that continues to exist. This update to my identity can occur after a tribulation or before. We might have the good fortune to predict a tribulation before it occurs. This may allow us to change and kill off parts of our identity that would have made it difficult to pass through the storm. The identifier changes the identity in order to ensure survival from a coming tribulation. The identifier can not only work on information about the future to morph its identity, but can also work on memories from the past. Our identity is not a discrete state of the present time and space. It is an image of our combined past, present and future. Identity is about memory. Over time, memories fade and wisdom is obtained. There are some gifted individuals who can see into the future. They recollect events that are yet to happen and use that information to adapt and morph their identity. Are you still your past actions if no one remembers them, including yourself? There seems to be a consciousness above the flesh and all worldly creation that remembers all that we have done and will do. Our identity is independent of the image our identifier constructs with the information, memories and prophecies it has. We are more than our own creations, whether we know it or not. I think memory and past events are surface level. They themselves do not contribute to identity. It is the meaning, beliefs, motifs, and lessons behind the actions that matter. Those are the things that stick. People will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. They will also never forget the lessons that you taught them if it came through an intense emotional experience. Regardless of whether they act on the lesson or not, there is the identity of the living flesh and the identity of the bloodline or genes that codes the flesh. We all know that our genes store information about us that may not appear in our phenotype or personality. These traits are still us, even though we may not be them. The fleshly identity is reset every time a member of the bloodline reproduces. The identity of the surname may be altered by who the living flesh chooses to marry. The features, skin color, race, ethnicity, culture, eye color, hair texture, height, intelligence and abnormalities matter to not only the fleshly identity but to the genetic or blood identity as well. 
Survival can mean a lot of things when it comes to identity. The most important being the survival of the living, breathing body. If the person dies, then the bloodline dies as well. There are other things or features that we may also want to keep alive even if our physical body perishes, like our beliefs, cultures, rituals, practices, finances, teachings, and reputation. This knowledge may be stored in individuals and in groups of individuals. Individuals in groups who are not related to you. It is not enough to just have children. You need to pass on your family name and information about it as well. Information that will help them identify their bloodline and genetic consciousness. Your descendants need to know themselves so that they may perceive the world in the correct frame. So as to not waste time falling into pits. We have a determined identity that is static as well as a fluid identity that we believe can be nurtured and taught. You do not lose your static identity when your memory is wiped. Just because you do not know who you are does not mean you have become a blank slate. Every action and word is remembered. Your identity can never be fully erased, changed or distorted. Your genes remember. The patriarch is ever present. The father is all knowing. Identities can be stored in different forms of media. Information can be captured in books, pictures, videos, music, voice notes, artifacts, and in the memories of those that are living. Mediums may also retrieve information about a person from their ancestors spirits or gods you are more your identity than you are your living body or the part of you that thinks the part of you that thinks can still discover parts of you parts of your identity that it did not know of before usually this discovery of a new part of your identity comes after an encounter with a dangerous force that forces you to bring to consciousness a part of your identity that you thought was irrelevant it is efficient to forget. There is only so much information that you can keep in your functioning consciousness. The most relevant information at the time and space being the most useful. Who we think we are is not always who we are completely. Even we can be irrelevant to ourselves. We like to believe that we are the part of us that thinks that that part can be removed from our flesh and still remain the same, still remain whole. We are currently incapable of separating the two. One does not exist without the other. I think our consciousness is just as much our flesh as it is our mind or nervous system. Aristotle taught that even the identification of bodily parts depends heavily upon their characteristic functioning. We construct our identities from the relevant functions of the parts that we are made of. Failure in the functioning of the mechanisms of our personal embodiment is failure of ourselves to be embodied. We die, even if the matter of which we are composed endures. It is the function that creates the identity, not the flesh or the thought. Even if it is sensible, an attribute without a function contributes nothing to our identity. Functions exist in relations and relations are created from differences. Functions exist in relation between two different objects. The function creates the relation between people, places and time. And the relation creates the identity of the persons, consciousnesses, spirits and gods within an interaction.